So the last time we talked about how close many Hawaiian words and also words in other Polynesian languages are to Malay, Indonesian and also the different languages in the Philippines. Uh, but we also talked about how these similarities are actually obscured or hidden by sound changes. So a word may sound very different in different the same word. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few more very, very common uh, words and vocabulary items in different languages that are actually the same word that have changed over time that we no longer recognize. And uh, by using this sort of common, ordinary words that we use every day, it, this will actually surprise you as to how similar they are and how much we have in common still after being separated for so many thousands and thousands of years. All right, so let's take a look. All right, now the word for fried fish, like this photo over here, is ia palai. So if you say, I like fried fish in Hawaiian, it's it's makemakeyao ikai apalai. I'll say it again, makemakeyao ikai apalai. And this is very different from Indonesian, it's very different from Malay, from Filipino. So in Tagalog, you would say something like this, gusto ko ang piniritong isda. So, no resemblance at all, right? You see, oh, it's completely different. I can't, we can't understand each other. How about Bahasa Malaysia? Which is even more different. I think, aku suka ikan goreng. I like fried fish. Now, if you look at the similarities, however, uh, there are a couple things in common. The word for I, in this case, in Hawaiian, is au. And it's the same as aku in Bahasa Malaysia. Alright? And in Tagalog, you gusto ko. Tagalog, you gusto ko. The ko means my or... Uh, yeah, my or sometimes it means me as well, depending on the context. But in this case, gusoko means my liking. And if you look at the, the Hawaiian sentence, the verb always comes at the beginning. So, make make means to like. Make make. Alright, and then uh, let's take a look at the, the, the meaning. So, make make au, it means I like. E is actually kind of like a, a particle that shows that the, the next phrase is an object. So we'll, we'll talk about this as we meet this uh, in, in later uh, videos, because this is a very, very common expression. Okay, so ikai apalai means the, ka is the, and ia is fish, palai is fried. Alright, so the word make make means to want, to like, you know, to enjoy or to desire, and it actually comes from very, very, uh, it's actually a reduplication of the word make, which is the Hawaiian word for to die. That's right. So if you say in Hawaiian, I like, if you say in Hawaiian, I like you, it literally means I'm dying for you. I like ice cream, I'm dying for ice cream. That's that's how they say it. So uh, this word is, of course, is related to a lot of different words in other Polynesian languages. Uh, you say to die in, in, in Maori, mate, mate in Tahitian, in, in Easter Island, mate as well. So, so a lot of different languages use this. And this comes from actually uh, the proto austronesian word, something like matai that was used in Taiwan thousands of years ago. And this is the origins of the Malay word mati, uh, the, the Tagalog matai. A lot of words in the Philippines have this similar uh, pronunciation. And mat, mat is in, Mal mat is in Malagasy. In Madagascar, they say mat. So again, you see that there's a resemblance, okay? And of course, different languages will use the same word in different ways. So, so for example, a person who speaks Malay might not say to die is the same as to want. But this is how they do it in Hawaiian. If you look at other words, there are also very similar expressions as well. Uh, the word for to be thirsty in Hawaiian is makevai. So I am thirsty is makevaiyo. So make is to die, vai is water. So I am dying for water, I'm thirsty. And the word for to be hungry, uh, make ayo, make ai. So make is to die, ai is food. So I'm dying for food, I'm hungry. Food. So I'm dying for food, I'm hungry. So this is actually... A very interesting feature. So different languages might use the same vocabulary from the ancestral language, but they use them in different ways. And we see this throughout the Austronesian languages. So sometimes, even though you have the same word, it, the, the 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 idiomatic expressions, you know, that that evolved that evolved over time, can be very very different from one another. And this is a very clearly you can see this is word uh, make. And then let's move on. All right. So the word for. Uh, Make make yao ikai apalai. In this case, uh, the um, if we compare again the different forms, the word for ia meaning so in Hawaiian the 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 particle ka meaning the okay it, it's actually very very common. It has a few at least two different forms. So sometimes it's ke, sometimes it's ka, uh, depending on the word. Uh, we'll look at it as as we 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 meet we see new examples along the way. But the word for ia fish, of course, is actually the same as ikan. So let's, let's take a look. 
So the proto austronesian word for fish was probably something like sikan or sikan as used in Taiwan. And if you look at the languages in Taiwan, uh, many of them still have this word. So ikan, this is the Malay word. But in um, Bunun and Huanya, Bunun and Huanya, so two of the languages in Taiwan, we have the word iskan or sikan. And that comes from the word for fish. And if you see the word uh, in other languages as well, uh, in, in the Polynesian languages, it became ika. So very, very common uh, feature as well is the, the, the endings are always dropped. So ikan becomes ika. And most languages also have lost the S sound. So anyway, so sikan, will, it, it, it becomes ika. And we see this as well. And there's another major change in Hawaiian that I, I talked about earlier, is that the K sound, the ka sound, has shifted to a glottal stop. So ika, ia, ia. So ikan and ia are actually actually the same word. And if you give an example of other and if you give an example of other changes uh, in different languages in Guam, uh, in the Chamorro language, uh, fish is guihan, guihan. So there's another little sound change going on. Uh, just to show you exactly, you know, you know how a simple word like this can change over many thousands of years. Uh, let's look at more. Uh, let's look at more examples. All right, so so in Tagalog, the word for fish uh, is isda, and that actually comes from a, a, a different root. It's something like sida or sira, and it actually means uh, a dish that is served together with rice. That was the original meaning. So in Ilocano, if you say sida, I, sida, I apologize for my pronunciation if I, because I don't speak Ilocano, but um, you know, in any case, sida, I think that's how you say it. Uh, if it isn't, please comment and let me know. All right, this is the word for food that's eaten with rice. So what we call in Malay, lauk. And in Malagasy, lauk, lauk. That's the same word as in Bahasa Malaysia, Bahasa Indonesia, ra sira or something, which means food that's eaten with the rice. So you have rice, you have the fish, meat, vegetables, all these together, you know, other than the rice is the, is the sira, or sida or isda, depending on the language. And those, so Tagalog, it became the word for fish because obviously fish is a very important food throughout the Austronesian world. You live on islands, you travel by the sea, you need to eat fish. So it's, you know, it's no surprise that this became uh, the word for fish. Uh, in, in Tagalog and many, many other languages as well. Right, so example. And then let's move on. So if we look at the original sentences, makemakeyao, sorry, ikai apalai, makemakeyao ikai apalai, and then gusto ko ang piniritong isda, and aku suka ikan goreng. So some of the other similarities and differences, if you look at them, um, basically the word fried in Hawaiian comes from actually the English word uh, palai, uh, sorry, <laughs> reverse, the, the word palai in Hawaiian comes from the English word fried. Fried, palay. Uh, because remember that, that Hawaiian doesn't have an F sound and that it doesn't have an R sound. So whenever the, the uh, words borrowed from English into Hawaiian, they are adapted into the phonology. Okay, and then and so because of all, all these sound changes, fried, palay. Okay, so ia palay means fried fish. Uh, if you look at Tagalog, again, something very similar going on. The word for to like, gusto, comes from Spanish. It's the Spanish word for, I think it means gusto, like mucho gusto, like pleasure, taste, something like that, right? Uh, something good. And then if you see the word uh, for fried, piniritong, it, it's actually from pinirito, from prito. Prito is from the Spanish frito. So because of this, of obviously, if you speak uh, Hawaiian or you speak Malay, you wouldn't know what gusto means. You wouldn't speak Malay. You wouldn't know what gusto means. You wouldn't understand frito because these are borrowed from Spanish. Likewise, if you speak uh, Tagalog, but you don't, you don't realize that the word for fried in Hawaiian palai is from fried in English. So these are some of the things that make it difficult for you know the different groups, the different Austronesian languages to communicate with each other. Another thing that I talked about in my previous videos, um, borrowing words that are borrowed from different languages, yeah, these are very, very common. And um, another one uh, that's interesting, love the word for to like in Malay or to want, uh, not to like, okay, is suka, which is from Sanskrit sukha. Sukha, sukha, suk. In Hindi, I think you still use it uh, to mean like uh, pleasure or uh, the kind of thing. Sukha, sukha. So it means, it's interesting that, of course, the word for pleasure, like, want, enjoy, are often quite connected in different languages. And we can see this, actually. Um, and the last word I'm going to look at now is the word for fried fish in Malay, ikan goreng. So where does goreng come from? You know, like nasi goreng is fried rice, you know, ayam goreng is fried chicken. chicken. So where does it come from? Actually, this is the easiest one. So the, the word for fried rice comes from actually the uh, this. When you fry something in a wok, it makes a, a greng, 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 greng kind of sound. And that greng, greng sound is where goreng comes from. 
Okay, so um, yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Uh, if if you like the, the 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 video, please subscribe. I've got more content coming out. Um, I'm going to introduce uh, more different Austronesian languages to you, and also um, show you more correspondences and similarities between other languages uh, in the Austronesian group. So not just it's, it's not just Malay, Tagalog. I'm going to go to Taiwan. And describe some languages there. I might compare Malagasy because I am, am currently trying to improve my Malagasy. Um, we might look at some vocabulary from there, how these words have changed. Um, again, remember because of, of the uh, traveling, when different groups go to different places, they often adapt words from other languages. So in Malagasy, for example, a lot of the words for uh, types of food and animals are actually from African languages languages because obviously when 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 they left Southeast Asia to go to Madagascar they they encountered new animals that they didn't you know find before and uh, you could see the same also for the Austronesian languages spoken around Papua New Guinea a lot of them have borrowed words and even grammatical uh, sentence structure from the Papuan languages so let, let's take a look at this as as we go along okay so um, if you have any comments, any questions, please, please, please uh, write. Please, please uh, write. You know, write to me. Write below. If you're shy, then send me a direct message. Whatever. Uh, let's keep this going. I like to have a conversation, with people.